Hey everyone, this is Eric Johnson. Today I want to talk about the three main reasons Asperger's people have extreme anxiety. So, first of all, <clears throat> people with Asperger's, 65% of them live with anxiety 24-7 and they can remember all the way back to their childhood that they were always in a state of fight or flight and total anxiety. So. It's really a struggle for a lot of us, and um, a lot of us turn to self-medication. We turn to drugs, alcohol, sex, TV, sugar, you name it. We probably have done it just to, you know, divert our attention away from our pain and our, our angst and our anxiety. So here are the three main reasons. Number one is anxiety from socializing. Now. People with Asperger's, they're constantly trying to figure out how to socialize. It's more of like a chess game than it is just a natural, intuitive thing that normal people do. Um, you know, people with Asperger's have, they have, they lack social cues, okay? So we don't really understand what the other person is feeling. A lot of the times we're not even thinking about the other person we're just trying to figure out how to act around people and that can be very exhausting to constantly wonder if we're doing a good job if we're fitting in are they thinking that we're weird um, it's just exhausting the other thing is that we lack the appropriate expressions during a conversation in fact it was only a few years ago that I just learned to nod when people were talking to me because I, I literally was asking my girlfriend at the time I was like how do you what do you do when you're listening to someone because I thought that my mom smiled when people spoke because you know my mom's an incredible lady and she's very sweet so when I used to watch her listen to people and my mom would smile you know when she was listening to people and I tried doing that and my face would crack, my smile would crack, I would, my eye would start twitching because I'm trying to smile and be like my mom listening to people. And then I, when my girlfriend and I went to uh, Peru, I noticed that no one smiled unless they were genuinely happy. But they looked like they were going to kill us when we were going through this... Uh, we were going through a small town to get to our uh, retreat. Um, they were all just like this. But then when they cracked a smile, when they genuinely laughed, it was the most beautiful thing ever. But they didn't feel like they had to smile. It's, it's almost like an American culture thing that, you know, we're supposed to smile at all times to show some type of, you know, perfectionistic you know lifestyle or something and there it's just a lot of pressure for people with Asperger's so um, you know even around my parents now I know I'm going to be exhausted because I want to act normal around them when they come visit and my dad you know I try to smile you know when my dad's talking and he's like what you know what's wrong and I'm like nothing I'm smiling so obviously I'm not doing it right. It doesn't look like a smile. It's not genuine. So it just, there's a lot of pressure just on socializing for us. Number two, anxiety from oversensitivity. So noises, lights, smells, we are bombarded by sensory overload every single day. We do not like sudden noises. We don't like alarm clocks. We don't like uh, silverware hitting plates. We don't like hearing people chew. We don't like hearing people snore. You know, it just throws us, you know, I get irritated just hearing our cat lick, lick himself. I mean, it's just incredible what I can't handle. Even at night, I have to wear earplugs because any slight sounds are going to just wake me up. I, I sleep light and I need eight hours of sleep a night, so it's very stressful. Um, we always have to have a fan or an AC unit going. There has to be white noise constantly. Right now there's a heater going, and that white noise is making me feel more at ease. But if it's a completely quiet room, like when I go visit my parents, they have no white noise, it drives me through the roof. 
So number three, anxiety from unpredictab unpredictability. Asperger's plan and predict everything. Even as children, we had an image in our mind what we wanted to uh, accomplish with our our play. You know, even when we were in the sandbox, we probably had a plan in mind what we wanted to do, what kind of castle we wanted to make. And if a kid comes around and starts, you know, messing with our castle, we're going to get stressed out. And that's still the same thing today as adults. I constantly have a plan in mind. I have a short term plan. I have a long term plan. I know what I want to be doing a year from now, five years from now tomorrow and if something changes that plan i get very overwhelmed i get stressed out i need to know what's going on normal children they like collaboration and they like uh being spontaneous uh children with asperger's they need predictability and control my dad was a control freak so growing up under my dad we went to bed at 8 o'clock when I was 12 years old. When I was older, it was 10 o'clock. We had dinner exactly at 6, 6 p.m. every single night. We had breakfast exactly at 7 a.m. every morning. That is how I was brought up. So now, living with my fiance's family, they do whatever they want. They eat, you know, they can eat dinner at like 8 p.m. at night, 9 p.m. I want to be in bed by 8 p.m. So it's very, very stressful sometimes. And I just have to take a deep breath and let it just go with life. Just instead of fighting the stream, I have to just let go and drift down with the stream. Just go with the flow, you know. And I know that sounds easier. It's easier said than done. It's very hard to go with the flow, but it's killing us by fighting the flow by fighting the rhythm of life. And I'm working on it every single day. I'm 48 years old and I, I'm catching these things every single day. I'm just a control freak, okay? The other reason why that we wanna control is because we don't feel safe in our environment. And when you don't feel safe in your environment, guess what? You try to control every situation. You don't want other people to provide feedback. You don't want other people to come in and start changing things that you wanted to stay a certain way. Because to that, to us, that is a serious threat. Because we have a plan in mind. In fact, I pre-plan all of my communication. The night before, I will literally, if I, if I know I'm going to talk to someone tomorrow, I pre-plan the conversation. It, it, it really comes down to that. It's so automatic for me. I don't even know I do it anymore. For instance, if I if I need to go out and um, work on what I'm going to make for the day, but I know that Misha's sister is out there, I plan how I'm going to talk to her sister before I before the day is even here. I just need to know what I'm going to say because I don't want to fumble. Because if I mess up my words. It causes tremendous stress because it's it's off script and when I'm off script I'm like oh no I have to be spontaneous and people with Asperger's they cannot be spontaneous they can pretend to be spontaneous but they probably have a good idea what's gonna happen or they have three to five scenarios that might play out and they've thought about each one and they're okay with it Okay, that's the type of spontaneity that we work with. The last thing, which is kind of like a bonus anxiety uh, thing, is that we feel a lot of anxiety from guilt and shame from being different. We know that we're different, and we feel a lot of guilt and shame that we can't just socialize and be like normal people. You know, Asperger's is a social and emotional disorder, mainly. So we are we are just stressed out that we can't be like other people and just be all easy breezy with our communication or our emotions you know one minute i'm happy the next minute i'm on the verge of tears and it's 
it's a roller coaster every single day and that can create a lot of guilt and shame which then creates a lot of, a lot of anxiety the roller coaster of emotions creates a lot of anxiety and we want it to stop and that's why we turn to self medication that's why I rocked back and forth for 40 years probably 45 years if you count the rocking horse and the rocking chair um, and my dad was the same way growing up under an alcoholic my dad was terrified of his life his dad was a, a rageaholic um, he was a drunk he brought out a shotgun one time scared the heck out of my dad my dad was scared of his dad and then I was scared of my dad even though he wasn't a drunk he was more like a dry drunk and he raged and it scared me I, I hid from him I hid in my room and then I started hiding from life and I just hid behind alcohol and drugs sex sugar whatever and now it's all coming to the surface and I'm getting to the bottom of it I'm doing hypnosis I'm doing inner child work and I'm trying to do more self talk positive loving affirmations because it's okay it's all okay you can relax you can just relax and take a deep breath it's okay you are loved okay love yourself I love you I love myself forgive yourself okay we're shackled by unforgiveness by guilt and shame the moment you can realize that you can forgive yourself that is where true healing begins so I love you guys hit the subscribe button thanks for watching leave a comment below and we'll talk to you soon